Hi all, and welcome back to the shed. Um, so we found a fix for the voltage, over voltage alert. Um, it was kind of a battle to get it there. Not quite the settings I was anticipating for my wants, um, but it seems to be where the controller is at right now. Um, so essentially I ended up increasing the over voltage disconnect to 14.8 from originally it was at 14.4 then I tried 14.6 um, and then eventually 14.8 and that solved the problem. Um, the 14.4 you know I can understand why it was doing that it was kind of a battle to the finish as far as like do we go in disconnect mode or are we at full charge mode and so I understand that. The thing that baffles me is that for six months this um, controller has been running like this and the battery has been fully charged almost daily actually. Um, so it's been kind of interesting that it disappeared out of nowhere. Um, Renogy doesn't have an answer for me actually on that one which was part of my original question like why did it just start doing this out of nowhere. Um, for those of you just catching up um, out of nowhere, about two to three weeks ago, actually, at this point, um, all of a sudden my uh, charger started throwing up an over voltage um, disconnect error, and it, it would shut down everything, including the load terminal, which I found out later is part of the function of the um, controller itself, which I didn't know that, or I would have never been using the load. Um, to me, it just kind of, in case something happens, I wanted it up and going because that's what my uh, Renogy One Core is plugged into and that's how I monitor the system, yada, yada, yada. Um, at any rate, you know, back and forth, back and forth with Renogy over about a three week span and they finally got it sorted out. Actually, it wasn't three weeks. It's been about three weeks now, but they got it sorted, up, sorted out with me a few days ago. Um, my only complaint about the whole ordeal is of course one they kind of evade the original question um, although we did get the problem fixed um, and the time it took to deal with it this seems to me like it would have been a really simple solution because um, initially they wanted me to decrease that value of the over voltage disconnect which didn't make sense to me but I tried it and it continued to go into that error. Nonetheless, they finally got back to me, you know, over many attempts and we got her up and going. It's been running well for a few days now, about a week actually. Um, the bummer of it is, is that um, a couple days after I got up and running, I came out here to turn on my lights um, as I usually do. And the inverter that I had, this is a different inverter by the way, um, made an electrical shocking sound and you could see the flicker of flames through the fan onto the um, wall behind and then the magic smoke came out. Um, it's been a week since that happened, over a week actually, and Renogy has replied to me once, I haven't heard back from him. <laughs> so for what it's worth, I'm moving on from Renogy. Um, I'm going to still, not moving on, moving on, I'm going to continue using this product. It's going to be dismantled and put into another less critical spot. Um, essentially, this is my tool shed. I do a lot of work out here. I tinker on a lot of projects. Um, I can't have something that just shuts down out of nowhere. Um, it stops everything for what I'm up to. Um, and for future use also when I'm working on my rural property. So this Renogy system here is going to go into an outdoor kitchen. Um, I'll explain more about that later. It's not so critical that if it did stop working or it did have an error for some reason, I can literally just run an extension cord to it from whatever current system I have and get it up and running and just move on. Or we could use another method of cooking. <laughs> um, but for right now... Um, we're, we're with this. I do have another controller. It is a midnight controller. Um, it is one of their do-it-yourself ones. Um, it's a 24 volt, the thir MN3024 is what they call it, DIY. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be in one of my upcoming videos actually. And um, I don't know if it's going to be in the next video, but definitely the video after that. Um, I'll have it completely up and running and 
taking up one of the spaces in the shed here. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it has an e-panel that goes with it. It's a clean, seamless look. Um, it'll again get rid of all these wires here, um, which is, you know, a great way to learn. Renogy, you taught me a lot. And you're still teaching me and I'm still teaching people about solar systems at this point. Um, I am a moderator for the Renogy Power Group page. I'm going to continue to honor that. And I'm not going to knock Renogy. I'm going to abide by the rules. And I'm going to continue to help people. But let's go ahead and take a look at um, my current settings. And then over here on the tablet, I've got my current settings versus my prior settings and we can do some compare and contrast and then for you folks out there that have been having difficulty um, getting yours to work properly because you've had the same error maybe try these out um, if your batteries match up like um, with mine um, I am running a 200 amp hour eco worthy battery I've got four of them in parallel 12.8 volts um, and so I'm kind of running off some of their settings, some of Renogy settings, and some of my own settings to get this error to go away. It's kind of a, a juggling act, so to speak, but we got it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that um, before this intro drags on too long and people lose interest. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so one of the things that, you know, I've had some difficulty with um, is you know, this voltage here was just 13.2 volts, and I'm actually at 13.3 um, volts according to the smart shunt. Um, it is a little bit of a difference, um, I think, with some of these values. Maybe the battery sampler, which Renogy told me is not necessary or not to use it with this setup, may come in handy. I don't know. Um, I may try it. I may not. Um, but uh, um, we'll kind of come back and circle back around to that. Let's take a look at my current settings right now. So these are all the same through here. Where I change it is my um, over voltage disconnect, okay? It was at 14.4, now it's at 14.8 as you can see. Um, so that's a little bit of a change there. I just kept bumping it up. They wanted me to lower it initially, which I did. I lo lowered it down to like, uh, I think I started out at 14.6 and they wanted me to try 14.4 and then I ended up, yeah, I don't know, it just went back and forth and it was getting a little bit on the redunculous side, but we finally got her figured out. Um, now the charge, uh, limit voltage, um, you know, it's the limit of the charge voltage. I've got mine set at 14.4, that did not change. Um, I don't wanna go over that, to be honest with you. I think 14.4 is just fine. And like I said before, anything over like 13.3 or 13.6 or whatever, it is just surface charge and it goes away rapidly. Um, maybe I'll explain all that in a different video as I learn about it. Um, the uh, next one here are, um, the equalization, that's really, that's for like uh, filled lead acid batteries. It's not necessary um, with the life apo That's a whole other subject there. I've got mine set at 14.4 volts. It doesn't seem to matter. Um, I just leave it there. It doesn't seem to affect the overall performance of um, what I'm up to. I don't want it to be set higher because then it may want to try to go equalize it and go for a higher boost or something like that or a float voltage. So we're just going to leave it where it's at. Now... My boost charge voltage, um, I've got mine set at 14 volts. So I could go higher, I could go to 14.0. It was at 14.2, I mean 14.4, it was at 14.2. Uh, um, basically that's just what it'll charge at once it drops down to the uh, boost charge recovery voltage, which we'll kind of take a look at now. Um, float voltage, um, Again, that's something that's really not needed. Um, that's more for like a filled lead, filled lead acid battery. I've got mine set at 13.2, which is by the time I get there, heck, we're down around 20% of battery or 30 or something like that. Um, but back to what we were talking about with the, um, the, the boost charge recovery uh, limit or trigger, um, I've got it set to 13.4. Now before I had it set at 14.4, and it would kind of hover there actually. Um, I found out that if I set it down to 13.4 volts, basically after it gets to that full charge of 14.4, and then th that surface charge kind of wears off as it runs, you know, um, the underlying uh, 
uh, operating current for the charger and the inverter and whatever else I got hooked up, um, like the one core, it will slowly trickle down. And then when it hits 13.4, it'll kick back in and then it'll charge up to that initial, uh, um, that boost voltage I was telling you about earlier, which is at 14 volts right now. So it kind of hover in that range. Now, low voltage recovery volt, um, recovery. So that I did change. Um, I had it at 10.5 and that's now at 12.6. Okay. And my, um, under voltage warning, I've got it set at, um, 12.0 and it was at 10.5 so I changed those and then um, low voltage disconnect um, I did have it at 12.0 and 11.5 essentially I had the low voltage recovery and the low voltage disconnect confused in my head um, through digging through the manuals and talking with Renogy they kind of straightened out what they were for me I had the values mixed up um, that didn't affect this oh this error of the over voltage um, disconnect error so you can see now where my proper settings are at and bada boom bada bing i hope that helps out you guys um let's go ahead and move on okay so there's kind of like the handwriting um my handwritten chart of past and present settings and what solved the problem for me so i'll go ahead and hold it there if you guys wanted to like take a better look at that write it down um pause it whatever you got to do i'm happy to happy to help out here so uh trying to hold as steady as i can <laughs> okay folks so there you have it um it was an easy fix on this end but still the question begs why did it start happening when everything was running fine before? Um, again, Renogy kind of eludes that question. Um, all it states to me is that there's something unreliable with the system. I don't know what it is. Um, and reliability is everything for me. Um, I'm not knocking Renogy. I may have just gotten a lemon. Um, but the fact of the matter is, this is my second controller that I've had. Um, the first one had a different type of air where it actually started heating up. It got up to 160 degrees actually. And um, no alerts were going off, no alarms, no nothing. Um, they took that one back and then I got a new one. Um, which now, And this is of course having this type of deal happen now, which is unfortunate. Um, Renegy, I've got a lot of faith in you guys that you can actually solve some of these problems and uh, make a better controller for everybody um and uh that's about all i got right now like i said this can this system's gonna get moved and it was initially meant to be moved it was gonna be moved into a camper but now it's going to the outdoor kitchen we're gonna explore, explore other options for the camper we need something better for the shed because i need something reliable and also for the camper and also for the property. Um, Renogy is still in the ballpark. Um, I'm gonna use it for different reasons now and I'm still gonna advocate for you and help people solve their problems because uh, I think under there somewhere, these are good controllers, but there are some flaws, okay? So thanks for tuning in, you guys. Um, I'll say it, go ahead and like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, you got anything different you would do, let me know. I'm always up for learning. And for those of you that I've helped through this, um, thanks for watching and I hope this solves your problems. If it doesn't, let me know and we'll keep tweaking on it because we're all learning together. Okay. Thanks now. Bye.